All right, day 235, Coffee with Kenny. I'm Kenny Keller, creator of Helicopter Online Ground School, author of the Amazon number one bestsellers, Helicopter Check Ride, and Top 10 Check Ride Tips. Did this with 2018 Flight Instructor of the Year, Dan Taz Chrisman. We'll put those links down below for a free PDF, or you can get either one of those books for just shipping and handling. So I have an awesome question today, and it's about uh, a gentleman that wants to go for an EMS career, and the short of his email, basically he's Coming out of the military, you only have 3,200 hours helicopter time in the military. He's got CFI, CFI 2 commercial instrument, all turbine time. So he is set up awesome for an EMS career. And basically in the email he said, I know some of the providers look for 24 months recency flying commercially. So I'll, I will be retiring from the military and waiting two years before applying for a civilian pilot position. And, and he did mention that he wants to go for the EMS. Would you recommend just trying to go up with a CFI once every couple months, just to say somewhat current flying, or just wait until a few months before I'm wanting to start working and do 10 to 20 hours right then, or recommend neither? This is an awesome question for anybody wanting to get into the EMS field or any field. Yes, the different companies have different requirements on recency of experience. And uh, I got the picture of the BK-117 BK up today when we were at Heli Expo a few years ago. This is one of the helicopters we were looking at. There's Brian Rutledge, our operations manager. And I love the BK-117. That's what I flew for five years in EMS. Well, for half that five years, I flew BK-117. And that company that I worked for, I just did a video the other day where I talked about how they wanted a thousand turbine time, but they took my 350. I remember them hiring a pilot who was a Navy guy who hadn't flown in many years. So there are companies that may not require you have recency, right? But I have also seen, you know, the 100 hour flying requirement in the past 12 months or the 200 hour requirement in the last 12 months. For this specific question, I would say get researching what EMS companies you think you're gonna to wanna to work for. Bottom line, I would get flying. I wouldn't take the chance that you want to go for an EMS career with all your experience and then they go, oh, well, sorry, you got 20 hours in the last year, we need 100 or we need 200. Then you're going to be a little bit devastated and you're going to be behind the game. So I would first research what companies are you going to try to go to work for. But I say the more time you could get under your belt, the better. And with your experience, I would get a part time CFI job somewhere if you could and try to build, you know, a hundred or a couple hundred hours a year during that two years you're waiting to start applying for jobs. May not be what you want to do. You've got a commercial, you've got all that military time, the turbine time, try to get yourself doing something uh, with the turbine job, some kind of a flying job, part time. I would recommend get as, in as many hours as you can and be as current as you can because you want to sell yourself to those EMS companies, right? And we know that they're hurting for pilots, but I wouldn't count on that as being the reason why you're going to get hired, right? You always want to put your best foot forward. You always want to show up as prepared as possible. I would refresh my knowledge. And if I was you, I'd part-time see it, you know, do a CFI gig because it's going to help you keep your knowledge fresh. I've just recently talked about in these videos, how it's a problem in the EMS industry where a lot of pilots don't stay fresh. So to make yourself marketable, man, I would be, I'd get the CFI, or you have the CFI, I would find me a job doing some CFI work, would be my number one choice. Number two choice, find your job doing some, you know, helicopter rides in a jet ranger, or something you can do commercially, because with your amount of hours that you have, and your turbine time, you shouldn't have that much trouble getting some kind of a part-time gig. Uh, so that, that's my advice. Thanks. Just looking for some guidance and suggestions, Asher. So thanks for the question, Asher. I think it's a great, I like that question. It's a great question. Again, depends on the company you're looking for. But my advice, I'd get flying, man. I would stay flying and be as current as possible. I wouldn't just try to do 10 or 20 hours or just, you know, fly once every few months with a CFI. That's not really good recency of experience, I don't think. Good recency is going to be out there actually working, doing commercial work or doing CFI work, whichever one that might work for you in your area. Thanks for the question. I appreciate that very much. 
I am Kenny Keller, creator of Helicopter Land Ground School. You can go below to check out our courses, private, commercial, CFI, and instrument. Links down below where you can check out all those courses, take them for a 24-hour test flight, and be billed nothing. Decide it's not right for you, you remove your credit card before the end of the 24 hours, and be billed nothing. Or keep the training and go monthly. And those come with a 30-day money-back, no hassle guarantee. So give us a thumbs up. If you want to be a punk, give us a thumbs down and uh, make a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, click that little bell so you'll be notified of the daily video. We'll see you in day 236. Peace out.